The question is, what happens when we pray? What does it mean? What is the significance? How will it change me? What can we learn from prayer? Dave here with another video about prayer. First of all, prayer is not designed to change God. Let's get that out of the way. Prayer is designed to change us. That's right, you and me. Prayer is designed to change us. Second of all, prayer is not calling God in to bless our crazy ideas, stupid activities, misfortunes, and mistakes. Why would God bless such a great mess? Instead, prayer takes us into God's presence. Let that one soak in for a moment. Prayer takes us into God's presence. You heard me say God's presence, right? Prayer shows us God's will and prepares us to obey him. That's right. It's a way of preparation to obey God. Our role in God's kingdom is one of service. That's why I said obey. To obey is to be of service. Prayer shows us God's will and purpose and prepares us to obey him. It's all about our service to God. Did you hear me say service? That's right, service. Prayer positions us to serve God if we are listening. So what is this preparation and positioning involved with prayer all about, you ask? Great question. It includes prayer and intercession for God's children. That means other people, not just for you or just your family. God asks us to be in fellowship with others. Check this out. Let me illustrate something. Moses climbed Mount Sinai and spent 40 days communing with God, right? God showed him the weakness of the Israelites, remember? All of that wickedness. We see this in Exodus chapter 32, verse 7, where it says, then the Lord said to Moses, go down because your people whom you brought up out of Egypt have become corrupt. And again, that's in Exodus chapter 32, verse 7. You see, Moses had not known their desperate condition, nor had he realized the imminence of God's judgment upon them until God revealed it to him. As God made Moses aware of all that was at stake, Moses felt the same compassion for the people that God felt. Moses became willing to sacrifice his own life for his obstinate people. That's right. Moses became willing to sacrifice his own life because of other people. In a compelling and selfless prayer of intercession, Moses offered to have his own name blotted out of the book of life if God would spare the people. We see that in Exodus chapter 32, verse 32. But now, please forgive their sin. But if not, then blot me out of the book you have written. And that's in Exodus chapter 32, verse 32. In Moses' time with him, God had formed a mighty intercessor for his people. God will use your prayer times to soften your heart and change your focus. As you pray for others, the Holy Spirit will work in your heart so that you have the same compassion for them that God does. Look at, for a moment, Romans chapter 8, verse 26 through 27. Again, that's Romans chapter 8, verse 26 through 27, where it says, In the same way the Spirit helps us in our weakness, we do not show what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. And I just read to you Romans chapter 8, verse 26 through 27. If you do not love people as you should, pray for them. 
If you are not as active in God's service as you know he wants you to be, begin praying. You cannot be intimately exposed to God's heart and remain complacent. The time spent with God will change you and make you more like Christ. With prayer and, of course, fasting, you will have a changed character. It will be more like Christ compared to your old self. Sounds good, right? You'll see an increase of the fruits of the Spirit. That's what I mean. So what are the fruits of the Spirit, you ask? Well, it's all in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 through 23, where it says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things, there is no law. And that's in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 through 23. Now, isn't that a worthy set of character traits? Prayer is an essential part of our lives. It brings much needed assistance, comfort, and understanding of how God carries us when facing difficult circumstances. More importantly, those past journeys help us comfort others who go through the same thing that we do. Prayer is also one of the ways we worship God. Worship keeps us sane because it reminds us of the fundamental reality of the universe, that there is only one God. From the Resurrection Center, my name is Dave.